Greetings, eco-nerdlings. In this podcast, I'm going to be talking to you about the importance of biodiversity. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to begin with posing this question. Why should we protect sharks? And what do they have to do with biodiversity? Well, there are 400 known species of shark, and there are only six deaths caused to humans per year by sharks. However, we're responsible for killing 79 to 97 million sharks every single year. We kill them for their fins to make shark fin soup, for their organ meat and hides, as well as out of fear, especially unfortunately after the movie Jaws came out. Millions upon millions of sharks were killed after that movie. 32% of shark species are threatened with extinction. And sharks are actually a keystone species, which means they're very important to the ocean ecosystems that they live in. So what do sharks do? Well, they remove injured animals and they pick off the sick. Same thing that lions, tigers, and top predators on terrestrial biomes do as well. They target the sick and the injured. Many of them are actually very gentle, especially the great whale shark. They provide potential insight into cures for human diseases such as cancer, because sharks are actually cancer resistant. And again, they're hunted and killed by us. So these are two of the threatened species of sharks right here. So just what is biodiversity and why is it so important? Well, the biodiversity that is found in genes, species, ecosystems, and ecosystem processes is vital to sustaining life on Earth. We need all of the variation and the differences in order for everything to work. So, to begin with, I'm going to make sure everybody knows what the definition of a species is. A species is a set of individuals who can mate and produce fertile offspring. So just because they can mate doesn't mean they're going to produce fertile offspring. Similar to when a donkey and a horse breed, they create a mule, but the mule can't breed because it's sterile. Currently, they hypothesize that there's 8 million to 100 million species. Now that's a pretty big range. And the reason there's such a big range is that we've only discovered 1.9 million different species on Earth. There are still potentially millions upon millions of species that we haven't found or identified located in rainforests are the oceans, which are the two frontiers that we have the most trouble exploring. So the major components of Earth's biodiversity. Well, we have right here our gene diversity or genetic diversity. So differences within a same species in the population, they all have genetic differences. Just like we as humans, the human species, we have a ton of genetic differences. Different eye color, skin color, hair color, different features. So that's our genetic diversity as a population. We also have species diversity, which is the amount of species that live in an area. So rainforests have an extremely high amount of species diversity, meaning they have a lot of different species living there. We also have ecological biodiversity. This is the variety of terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems found in an area or on the entire Earth. And we also have functional diversity. This is the biological and chemical processes such as energy flow and matter recycling that are needed for the survival of species, communities, as well as ecosystems. It includes the energy from the sun being used by producers, which in turn create food in the form of glucose, which is eaten by consumers, which are eaten by top consumers, and all of them, whenever they die, are broken down by decomposers and their nutrients are cycled back into the environment. So, one of the most diverse uh, types of organisms on Earth are insects. There are tons of them. Right now, we've discovered about um, millions of different types of insects. So they've been around for about 400 million years, but they have kind of a bad rep because they bite you, just like mosquitoes. Uh, sometimes, you know, you get stung, you get bit, and they're not very pleasant. So they do have a bad reputation, but they are very useful to humans and ecosystems. They play extremely important roles in sustaining life in ecosystems. They are pollinators, which means they're responsible for pollinating different flowers including the flowers that make fruit, which we eat. They're natural pest control, so insects 
eat other insects a lot of the time, such as spiders. They'll catch a lot of the pesty insects, such as flies and mosquitoes. And they also help us to renew our soil, such as worms that are decomposers. So here you have a monarch butterfly, just to give you an example of the different diversity of insects, and a preying mantis. So, species diversity is a major component of biodiversity, and it tends to increase the sustainability of ecosystems, meaning the more species we have in an ecosystem, the more stable that ecosystem is, and it will be able to withstand some types of disasters. The reason for that is that if there is a ton of different species or different species diversities, at least a couple of those species will be able to survive and recolonize after some type of disaster. So here are some more definitions I want to make sure that you jot down. Species richness. This is the number of different species in a given area. And species evenness. This is the comparative number of individuals. So if you look at these two populations right here, or little graphics, right here we have monarch butterflies, we have a dragonfly, and we have a ladybug. On this side, we just have four butterflies and we have four ants. So as far as species richness goes, over here is going to more, uh, be more species rich, meaning that we have more species. We have a monarch butterfly, we have the dragonfly, and we have the ladybug, so three different species. On this side, we only have two species, a butterfly and an ant. However, over here in sample B, we have a better species evenness, meaning that there is an even number of butterflies compared to ants. Over here, we have less species evenness because we have um, four, excuse me, three different types of species. However, the butterflies outnumber the other species by one, two, three, four, five, six, to one. And diversity also varies with geographical location. There are some areas that are much more diverse than others. The most species-rich communities include tropical rainforests, coral reefs, ocean bottom zones, as well as tropical lakes. Species equilibrium model, theory of island, and biogeography. So this is the rate of new species immigrating it basically states that the rate of new species immigrating should balance with the rate of species extinction. And it also says you need to take into the account the size of the island as well as the distance from the mainland. So looking at these graphs, they're basically showing you the amount of species that immigrate in versus the extinction. So this would be our mainland. Right here would be the number of species on an island. This is a small island versus a large island. So the smaller the island, you're getting a little bit skewed in your data, and it's not going to be at equilibrium. Same thing from a far island versus a near island. The island that's closer is going to be a little bit more close to equilibrium than the island that's further away. Species richness seems to increase productivity and stability or sustainability of an ecosystem. It also helps to provide insurance against catastrophes. That's what I was talking about a little bit earlier. If we have many, many, many species living in an area and a natural disaster occurs, we're going to have a couple left over to recolonize and get restarted on the biodiversity of that area. So how much species richness is needed in, is debatable. Well, I hope that was helpful. Stay tuned for our next topic, which is going to be species diversity. If you want to follow me on Twitter and you like these podcasts or on Facebook, you can follow me on Twitter at Queen Nerdling or on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash nerdling science. If you liked this podcast and you want more, you can find more podcasts just like this for AP Environmental Science, and eventually there'll be some up there for AP Biology at www.nerdlingscience.com. Well, that's it for today. This is the Queen Nerdling signing off. Stay nerdy till next time.